and your colleagues. I'm Lewis. But Theo, who will be three in May, and Jasper, who's just turned one. Being pregnant is like such a nerve wracking experience because you're trying to keep these babies safe. But we were excited, weren't we? Yeah, it was definitely excitement, but obviously, it's fear of the unknown. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't think the nerves kicked in until. No, until, until your balls broke. Yeah, and then I was like, oh, this is really happening. And then Theo was born. And you were like so scared because he was so tiny, weren't you? You were like, I don't want to break his arms. Yeah, everyone always used to say it to us. Such a happy baby. Yeah. Really smiley baby, wasn't it? Yeah, which is. It's easy for someone who doesn't have to live with him to say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was very, but he had some lungs on him, didn't he? No, I ain't lungs. I've been taken to the doctors for about a week, hadn't I? Yeah. Like, back and forth because. He wasn't, he wasn't quite just right, something wasn't right about him. I woke up in the morning and I just like put my hand in, just like as you do. He was really hot, he was, um, he wasn't really with it, was he? He was a bit zonked out. His eyes were really glazed over, and he didn't want his milk, which was really unlike Theo. Um, so that's when we thought something was wrong. So we rang 111, and they said they're gonna send an ambulance. They were like, don't panic, that's what we do. And then we spent the whole day in um, Halifax Hospital. Um, but then they told us he was fine. They said, he's got a viral infection, take him home, give him cowpole, he'll get over it. I think it was like two in the morning and I just said to him, like something's not right with him. He was really, really hot again. He wasn't eating and wouldn't take anything. And that's when we were like, we've got to go back to the hospital. We ran 111 again and they sent an ambulance to us. I don't think they really did take it too serious. And we were young and like we were being over dramatic first yeah. time parents. It was a different doctor, no, no, not one that was dealing with us. He came in and said, you know, how long has he been this colour for? Since he came in, yeah, like we said, that's one of the reasons we brought him in, he doesn't look right. Um, yeah, and then it was all hands on hands, yeah. wasn't it? Did you remember them saying to me, we're going to take his blood now? And I was like, oh, is it going to hurt him? And they were like, if he cries, that's a good thing. At least we know he's aware. And they took his blood and he just didn't make him move, did he? He didn't move, he didn't, didn't even flinch. And I think then it, I was then in panic mode thinking, well, something's not right. He came back and they said it was meningitis. Um, Still at that point, I don't think we realised the seriousness of it because they seem to have it all under control. They give you antibiotics and they're monitoring him. But then on day four or five, he had a seizure. He started having seizures, didn't he? Like the emergency button was rang, everyone came charging in. They were like, Let's just, just get, just out, get out of the way, which was obviously we didn't want to leave him because we didn't know what was going on. But then they moved us into high dependency. They just kept saying to us, didn't they? Like, he's just not doing what what we would expect him to do. His body's not, it's, the infection's not going, he's not working. And then from that point, he, he'd have a really good day yeah. and then he'd have an awful night. So I think we were on day 15. He'd had a really, really good day, hadn't he? Yeah. He'd like giggled for the first time. And then he, it was like early hours of the morning we were in the room, weren't we? And we were looking at him like something's not right. Like he just sort of went funny in the face. So we rang the buzzer and they came over and then, yeah, he just went into like his biggest seizure that he'd had and that was two hours long. That was in the middle of the night. They basically wanted but, to put him into a coma so that his body had time to just like just rest, rest and recover. Yeah, and recover from it. So they had they brought everything in, the and machine to breathe for him, and that was horrible, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, but luckily I think I think well Two or three minutes before they were going to call it and make the decision, he, he, um, he came out of it, didn't he? Yeah, he just stopped. But you also feel a lot of guilt because, like, you're meant to protect them and and you you can't protect them because you don't know what to do to protect them. And we went like two, nearly three weeks without being able to pick him up because um, he was just covered just in wires and he was just constantly having something pumped into him, so he was wired up. He literally run out of veins on his hands. Didn't yeah, he? you just had no veins, you couldn't even see them, could you? That was just horrible because when he was awake and they were doing it, he obviously he didn't like it, which no. he wasn't going to. There was not like a positive to it. Like there wasn't like something that you could look onto and be like, oh okay, he's like looking better. That didn't mean anything at that time. And I think it was just we were just going hour by hour yeah. all the way. Joe. Oh, oh thank you. That was nice. I spent the first Probably 17 days I didn't leave the room, left a shower and that was it. Everyone says sleep when they sleep, but it's obviously loud and loud. We ended up doing shifts, didn't we? Yeah. Oh. They come in every couple of hours to check, do his observations. Yeah. So 
you don't get that like sleep so then you don't think it's properly, not you don't function properly. Day fifteen or sixteen, his they did his temperature and it had come down, hadn't it? Yeah. It still wasn't where they wanted it, but it was like a good sign that the temperature was, was dipping. It was the antibiotics was starting to kick in yeah. and do something. He was just a lot more you know, he just looked a lot more like Theo. And then they let me hold him. And I think that was a point of like, okay, I, I feel like we probably are out of the worst now. The best part was when they said, you know, you can you can go out for the day. It that was, was like a, a good and a bad thing though for me because like hospital, it was all we knew. We spent, like a security blanket, wasn't it? Yeah, like we'd spent a month in there. So for them to then say, you can go home was just like, I was obviously really happy, but I was also like- Really anxious. Yeah, really anxious. They, he stayed in our room till he was like nine months old. I didn't want him to leave. <laughs> I, we were checking his temperature all the time. Anything that looked a bit different, I just went into panic mode. We didn't enjoy him. We wanted him to grow up really quickly. We wanted to make sure he was meeting all his milestones. We wanted yeah. to, it was just sort of like, we wanted him to do everything um, just to make sure that he was okay and obviously there was no lasting effects. I think that was a big thing, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. From what we've been told, he's very lucky to, yeah. to have no lasting effects, considering how poorly he was and how long he was poorly for. Yeah. So we had the whole of 2019. We were no meningitis was involved in our life, wasn't it? Yeah, meningitis free. Yeah, meningitis free for 2019, and then yeah, and Jasper came along in 2020. Everyone kept saying to us like, "You've got to be careful because he's probably going to be really jealous," but he just wasn't, was he? No, it was very good. When we brought him in, he sat on the sofa and wanted to cuddle him, didn't he? Yeah. He was just a bit boisterous. <laughs> but I think he thought he was a toy. <laughs> Jasper was the guzzle belly, wasn't he? He eats and drinks everything. Yeah. <laughs> He'd refused his milk all day. I couldn't get him to drink, but it was really odd. Um, and he was really sleepy. He spent a lot of the day sleeping, um, which again, wasn't really like Jasper at all. He was a bit of a cat napper. I thought something's not right. But I went to the doctor and she gave me a letter and said, you need to go to the hospital. And then I asked her, do you think it's meningitis? And she was like, I can't say that, I'm not sure. And then she was like, I'm really sorry that you're going through this again. And then, then I think it hit me and I was like, she just knows something's not right. Yeah. Um, it was all go, go, go when we got there with Jasper. The nurses were amazing. and like, Some of them remembered us from Theo. Same yeah, doctor, same, so same room. Same doctor. It was like the worst day shuffle you could yeah. have. <laughs> they took him and said, I need to do a lump puncture. I couldn't go. No, it's I, not something you want After to I'd seen Theo do it, and I do, I do regret not going with him, but you've actually seen one do it. You don't no. want to see another one go through it. He was on antibiotics for 12 hours and then they took him off it and said that they don't need the antibiotics for the viral. And basically they just wanted to monitor him to make sure the temperature was coming down. And so with Jasper it was just sort of a waiting game to see what he did and how he yeah. acted. He had to just do it himself. Jasper was in there for four days, four days and where Theo was in there for basically a month. Theo was... wondered where we were, didn't he? Like He yeah. did keep asking, like, so he's like, <laughs> where's mummy, where's baby? <laughs> he was kept entertained here, he had all his toys and... So for him, it was just yeah. like, he was getting all the attention, so he was probably like, oh, it's quite nice that the baby's gone away for a little bit. The best friend, can't they? They are, they're brilliant together. They obviously argue, they want the same toy at the same time. Even though it was so hard and it was the worst thing, and yeah. it, we still live with it now, and like, I think sometimes I'm a bit worse than you, you're very good at like, Lewis is very good at thinking on the positive side that like, they're fine, um, whereas I, find it hard like think the worst all the time don't yeah you? like I just panic like I worry about them all the time I always used yeah. to say like oh God, what if the next baby has it you just think because you've done it once like it's not going to happen twice yeah once is enough in a, anybody's lifetime isn't it yeah definitely but I just feel guilty that they both had it and like, we're meant to protect them yeah and like I feel like we didn't protect them and I was doing my research of what was going to happen, what was going on. And I found meningitis now. I reached out to them, just wanted some answers, someone to tell me that I wasn't going crazy. <laughs> and they were amazing, yeah. You know if your child, something, if your child's not being your child, you know. Yeah, and I think if they do it to the doctors and they're like, oh, they're fine, you yeah, still don't think don't they're okay. Don't stick around, just, yeah, from, just don't you know, keep pushing. And... Keep pushing and keep taking them and you know your child better than anyone. Like if we had left Theo, it, probably wouldn't be here with us today. Yeah, I agree.